1944, to break the deadlock, a landing. In the half-light of early morning, many machines go ashore at Anzio. A big jump nearer to Rome, and another front to strain the enemy's already hard-pressed forces. At Cassino, the enemy is the cork in the bottleneck formed by sea and mountain. There, the Allies must continue their battering, for there is the German main strength. But with their command of the seas, the British and Americans have the power to jump, to sail up the coast and bypass the neck of the bottle. From Naples, fighting men board the landing craft that will carry them to the new strip of friendly soil, Juan Atancio. There, the warships exchange shots with German batteries, well dug in around the new beachhead. But the light strength grows hour by hour, as more and more men, guns and tanks come ashore. Between the twin drives of Anzio and Cassino, the Allied command hopes to crack the nut of Nazi resistance. Already a steady stream of prisoners flows back to the landing craft that will take them away. Anzio promises well. Meanwhile, at Cassino, from his strong points in the hills, the enemy looks down at the Allied soldiers fighting up from the plain. Between sides, a jungle of broken walls and smashed holes that was once Cassino. A nightmare to the attacker, a perfect battlefield for the defender. Each crumpled wall, a natural barricade. Casino is costly indeed. High above the town is a famous and beautiful monastery. This, the Allies believe, is now a Nazi fortress. Though hating to destroy such a building, they fire off leaflets in their shells, warning the enemy that unless he retires, the monastery will be destroyed. The enemy does not reply. And so, well, watch for yourselves. Was the monastery of Cassino a German stronghold? Well, what does it matter now? And so men destroy that which other men labored with love to build for the glory of God and the benefit of all men. And what is happening at Anzio now, so few miles from Rome? Though the Allies are now assuring strength, because their first boldness was not followed quickly up, the enemy had had time to organize his resistance. No matter how the Allied guns hammer, from Anzio or roads to Rome are effectively cut. And then, of course, the rain comes. You didn't know it can rain in Italy. And how, when it does, the dust turns to a sea of mud? Oh, yes. That's the time when you begin to wonder who called our land Sunny Italy. That's the time when the narrow defiles from the hills fill the rivers with flood water until the rivers themselves can hold no more. Then in those rivers, the water takes on a power and a force that threatens every bridge. As the enemy left no bridges, the only ones are the temporary structures thrown over by the armies. And being hastily built, 
often they cannot withstand such terrible strain. Attack by nature on land, an attack too on the sea. A tank landing craft is driven ashore by the storm and wrecked on the rocks. Its cargo, German prisoners of war. British and American soldiers struggle to get the helpless ashore. Under such a pounding by the sea, the ship begins to break in half. Six Germans and two Americans are swept away by the waves. of the common enemy, friend and foe, battled together. But when at last the ship found us, 14 men have died. But with the passing of the rain, the war makes progress. At long last, the enemy has been driven from Casino. Up those terrible slopes, the Allied troops wind their way to the top. Up there, the monastery is just now a heap of stones and splintered beams. So much for the glory of God. Down those slopes into the prison cages come those who have resisted successfully for so long. Why do they fight so hard? And for what? 